Hello everyone, I am Shweta Dash, welcoming you to the Medical and Pharmacy Crash Course Division in the Knowledge Club Online. From today, I am going to start a new type of subject that is the Pharmacology. Today's topic on the Cardiac Pharmacology. In previous 14 episodes, we completed the detailed study on Cardiac Anatomy and Physiology, right? Those 14 episodes will be required in every step of the study of the cardiac pharmacology. So, revise it thoroughly. Today, I came with the topic anti antenal drugs or agents for angina pectoris treatment. About angina pectoris, ischemic heart disease, we learned at previous one anatomy physiology episode, muscle and tissues lecture. You will get that episode link in discussion box. Then, what's goal of therapy with anti-anginal agents? Goal of therapy with anti-anginal agents is to restore the balance between oxygen supply and demand in the ischemic region of the myocardium. No more about the anti-anginal drugs in this episode. Stay tuned after the end, don't skip the lecture. If you skip, you can miss our valuable points in between lecture. So I am going to start today's episode. So let's start. Ischemic heart disease is one of the most common cardiovascular diseases in developed countries and angina pectoris is the most common condition involving tissue ischemia in which vasodilated drugs are used. The name angina pectoris denotes chest pain caused by accumulation of metabolites resulting from myocardial ischemia. By far the most common cause of angina is atheromatous obstruction of the large coronary vessels, coronary artery disease or CAD. Inadequate blood flow in the presence of CAD results in effort angina, also known as classic angina. Diagnosis is usually made on the basis of the history and stress testing. However, Transient spasm of localized portions of these vessels is really associated with underlying atheromas. Can also cause significant myocardial ischemia and pain, vasoplastic and variant angina. Vasoplastic angina is also called Prince metal angina. Diagnosis is made on the basis of the history. The primary cause of angina pectoris is an imbalance between the oxygen requirement of the heart and the oxygen supply to it via the coronary vessel. In effort angina, the imbalance occurs when the myocardial oxygen requirement increases, especially during exercise and coronary blood flow does not increase proportionately. The resulting ischemia with accumulation of acidic metabolites usually leads to pain. In fact, coronary flow reserve is frequently impaired in such patients because of endothelial dysfunction, which results in impaired vasodilation. As a result, ischemia may even occur at a lower level of myocardial oxygen demand. In some individuals, the ischemia is not always accompanied by pain, resulting in silent or ambulatory ischemia. In variant angina, oxygen delivery decreases as a result of reversible coronary vasospasm, which also causes ischemia and pain. There are three types of angina present. Number one, classic angina, which creates off by exercise. Classic angina.
retina occurs when oxygen demand exceeds oxygen supply is well because of diminished coronary flow. Number two, vasoplastic or Prince metals or variant antenna. Vasoplastic antenna results from reversible coronary vasoplasm that decreases oxygen supply and occurs at rest. Some individuals have mixed antenna in which both exercise induced and resting attack may occur. Number three, unstable angina and acute coronary syndrome is said to be present when episodes of angina occur at rest and there is an increase in the severity, frequency and duration of chest pain in patients with previously stable angina. Unstable angina is caused by episodes of increased epicardial coronary artery resistance or small platelet clots occurring in the vicinity of an atherosclerotic plate. In most cases, formation of labile partially occlusive thrombi at the site of fixed or ulcerated plate is the mechanism for reduction in flow. In theory, the imbalance between oxygen delivery and myocardial oxygen demand can be corrected by decreasing oxygen demand or by increasing delivery by increasing coronary flow, right? Then, what's the pathophysiology of antenna? Determinants of myocardial oxygen demand, the effects of atrial blood pressure and venous pressure are mediated through their effects on myocardial wall stress. Determinants of coronary blood flow and myocardial oxygen supply resistance is determined mainly by intrinsic factors including metabolic products and autonomic activity and can be modified in normal coronary vessel by various pharmacologic agents. Damage to the endothelium or coronary vessel has been shown to alter their ability to dilate and to increase coronary vascular resistance. Determinants of vascular tone, peripheral, arterial and venous tone, smooth muscle tension, both play a role in determining myocardial wall stress. Now come to the classification of anti antenna agents. The three drug groups traditionally used in antenna. Number one, organic nitrates. Number two, calcium channel blocker and number three, the beta blockers. Decrease myocardial oxygen requirement by decreasing one or more of the major determinants of the oxygen demand. Means heart size, heart rate, blood pressure and contractility. In some patients, the nitrates and the calcium channel blockers may cause a redistribution of coronary flow and increase oxygen delivery to ischemic tissue. In variant antenna, these two drugs groups also increase myocardial oxygen delivery by reversing coronary artery spasm. Except these three potassium channel opener and some miscellaneous agents can also help in antenna treatment. Now come to the point a general mechanism of actions of anti antenna agents or vasodilators. The major types of vasodilators drugs may relax vascular smooth muscle in several ways. Number one, increasing CGMP. CGMP facilitates the dephosphorylation of myosin light chains, preventing the interaction of myosin with actin. Nitric oxide NO is an effective activator of the soluble gonadal cyclase and acts mainly through this mechanism. Important molecular donors of nitric oxide include nitroproside and the organic nitrates used in antenna. Atherosclerotic disease may diminish endothelial, endothelial enosynthesis, thus making the vascular smooth muscle more dependent upon exogenous source of NO. Number two, decreasing intracellular calcium. Calcium channel blockers 
pre-directly cause vasodilation because they reduce intracellular calcium ion. A major modulator of the inactivation of myosin light chain kinase in smooth muscle. Beta blockers and calcium channel blockers also reduce calcium ion influx in cardiac muscle fiber, thereby reducing rate, contractility, and oxygen requirement under most circumstances. Number three, stabilizing or preventing depolarization of the vascular smooth muscle cell membrane. The membrane potential of excitable cells is stabilized near the resting potential by increasing potassium permeability. CGMP may increase permeability of calcium and activated potassium channels. Potassium channel openers such as minoxidil sulfate increase the permeability of potassium channels, probably ATP dependent potassium channels. Certain agents used elsewhere and under investigation in the United States, that is, nicorandil, may act in part by this mechanism. Number 4. Increasing CAMP in vascular smooth muscle cells and increase in CAMP increases the rate of inactivation of myosin light chain kinase. The enzyme responsible for triggering the interaction of actin with myosin in these cells. This appears to be the mechanism of vasodilation caused by beta antagonist. Sorry, the beta agonist. Drugs that are not used in antenna because they cause too much cardiac stimulation and by phenol dopamine. A D1 agonist used in hypertensive emergencies. So let's start in the detailed pharmacological discussion on individual vasodilators. Number one, nitrates and nitrites. What is the structure of nitrates and nitrites? Nitrates and nitrites are polyol esters of nitric acid and nitrous acid, respectively, and relax vascular smooth muscle. Detailed study of pharmaceutical structure I will discuss in another episode on pharmaceutical chemistry chapter. Okay. Now the mechanism of action means pharmacodynamics. Nitrates and nitrites activate guanylate cyclase and increase cyclic guanine nucleotides. This activates CGMP dependent kinases ultimately leading to dephosphorylation of myosin light chain and relaxation of the contractile apparatus. These drugs dilate all vessels. Peripheral vasodilation decreases cardiac preload and myocardial wall tension. Arterial dilation reduces afterload. Both of these actions lower oxygen demand by decreasing the work of the heart. Redistribution of coronary blood flow to ischemic regions are increased in nitrate treated patients. Nitrates and nitrites ameliorate the symptoms of classic angina predominantly through the improvement of hemodynamic. Variant angina is relieved through effect on coronary circulation. Nitrates and nitrites form nitrosothiol in smooth muscle by reaction with glutathione. Tolerance occurs upon glutathione depletion. Nitroglycerin can be denitrated by glutathione as transferase in smooth muscle and other cells. A mitochondrial enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase isoform 2-ALDH2 and possibly isoform 3-ALDH3 appears to be key in the activation and release of the nitric oxide from nitroglycerin and pentaerythritol tetranitrate. Pentaerythritol tetranitrate. Defined enzymes may be involved in the denitration of isosolvate, dinitrate and mononitrate. Free nitrate ion is released which is then converted to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide probably complex with cysteine 
combines with the hem group of soluble guanine cyclase activating the enzyme and causing an increase in CGMP. Formation of CGMP represents a first step towards smooth muscle relaxation. The production of prostaglandin E or prostacyclin PGL2 and membrane hyperpolarization may also be involved. Primary direct result of an effective dose of nitroglycerin is marked relaxation of veins with increased venous capacitance and decreased ventricular preload. Pulmonary vascular pressures and heart size are significantly reduced. In the absence of heart failure, cardiac output is reduced because venous capacitance is increased. Orthostatic hypotension may be marked and syncope can result. Dilation of large epicardial coronary arteries may improve oxygen delivery in the presence of eccentric atheroma or collateral vessels. Bioavailability of the drug or pharmacokinetics. These drugs have a large first pass effect due to the presence of high capacity organic nitrate reductase in the liver, which inactivates drugs. Nitrates have a T half of less than 10 minutes. Number one, the nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is preferably administered sublingually for rapid delivery and short duration. Sustained delivery systems are available and are used to maintain blood vessels. Aerosol, topical, intravenous and oral presentation are also available. Amyl nitrate is a volatile liquid that is inhaled. An unpleasant odor and inextensive cutaneous vasodilation render it less desirable than nitroglycerin. Number 3. Isosorbide dinitrate. Isosorbide dinitrate has an active initial metabolites. This drug is administered orally or sublingually. It has better oral bioavailability and a longer half life up to 1 hour than nitroglycerin. Timed release oral preparations are available with duration of action up to 12 hours. Isosorbide more nitrate has comparable actions with a longer plasma half-life. Therapeutic uses of nitrate and nitrates. Sublingual nitroglycerin is most often used for severe recurrent prismatous angina. Continuous infusion, infusion of slowly absorbed preparations of nitroglycerin, including the transdermal patch or derivatives with longer half lives have been used for unstable angina and for CHF in the presence of MI. Adverse effects of nitrate and nitrates. Nitrates and nitrates produce vasodilation, which can lead to orthostatic hypotension, reflex tachycardia, throbbing headache, maybe dose limiting, blushing, and a burning sensation. Continuous exposure may lead to tolerance. Large total doses produced may hemoglobinemia and sinuses. Glaucoma once thought to be a contraindication does not worsen and nitrates can be used safely in the presence of increased intraocular pressure. Nitrates are contraindicated, however, if intracranial pressure is elevated. Clinical effect. The beneficial and deleterious effect of nitrate induced vasodilation are nitrate effects in angina of effort, decreased venous return to the heart and the resulting reduction of intracardiac volume are important beneficial hemodynamic effects of nitrates. Arterial pressure also decreases. Decreased interventricular pressure and left ventricular volume are associated with decreased valve tension, lapness relation and decreased myocardial oxygen requirement. In rare instances, a paradoxical increase in myocardial oxygen demand may occur as a result of excessive reflex tachycardia and increased contractility. 
intracoronary intravenous and sublingual nitrate administration consistently increases the caliber of the large epicardial coronary arteries except where blocked by concentric atheroma. Coronary arterial resistance tends to decrease though to a lesser extent. However, nitrates administered by the usual systemic routes may decrease overall coronary blood flow and myocardial oxygen consumption. If cardiac output is reduced due to decreased venous return, the reduction in oxygen demand is the major mechanism for the relief of effort antenna. Number 2. The nitrate effects in variant antenna. Nitrates benefit patients with variant antenna by relaxing the small muscle of the epicardial coronary arteries and relieving coronary artery spasm. Number 3. Nitrate effects in unstable antenna. Nitrates are also useful in the treatment of the acute coronary syndrome of unstable antenna, but the precise mechanism for their beneficial effect is not clear. Because both increased coronary vascular tone and increased myocardial oxygen demand can precipitate rest antenna in these patients. Nitrates may exert their beneficial effects both by dilating the epicardial coronary arteries and by simultaneously reducing myocardial oxygen demand. As previously told, nitroglycerin also decreases platelet aggregation and this effect may be of important is unstable antenna. Today's episode I am completing up to this after learning nitrates, nitrites drugs for antenna. Rest parts of the anti-anginal drug I will discuss in next episode. Revise the all episodes on heart thoroughly. I made it step by step accordingly here the all previous episodes list on heart anatomy and physiology. You will get all links at discussion part of this video or you can visit our channel. This is the first chapter of pharmacology of heart series. Before I need to this episode, if you like this video, please like, share and comment free. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. If you already subscribed, then thanks a lot. And after subscribing our channel, please click on the bell button for getting the regular update. I am coming with another episode very shortly. Till then, goodbye.